Hello and welcome everyone. I am Amar and today I am going to cover some questions on forensic photography and the topics that I am going to cover are depth of field, ISO, aperture and shutter speed. So without any further delay, let's move to the question number one. So question number one. The question number one states the fundamental difference between police photography and artistic photography. And here are the options. Option first, police photography uses more colors. Police photography often includes posed subjects. Police photography should be free of any artistic expressions. And fourth option is artistic photography focus on the natural color only. So the correct answer for this question is police photography should be free of any artistic expression. So as you know, in police photography, the very first aim of a police photographer is to capture the exact details of the evidence. So uh, you can say that they are going to document the scene without any alteration. While in the artistic photography, they are the, the aim of the artist is to make the picture more appealing or catchiness. So the main difference between them is that, is that the police photography usually focus on the more accurate form of evidence uh, collection. While in artistic photography, they focus more on the catchiness and make the image more appealing. So the third will be the correct answer. Now let's move to the question number second. Question number second states, what principle of artistic photography is still applicable to the crime scene photography? Option A, camera function. Option B, blurring images for effect. Option C, lightning techniques. And option D, use of color to enhance the photography. As I told earlier, that the artistic photography and crime scene photographies are two distinct uh, techniques. But in both the cases, the fundamental skill will be the same. For example, uh, the artistic photography or crime scene photography must know how the camera functions and and what are the lightning techniques that are used uh, to capture the more detailed photographs. So for this, the correct answer will be the option A and option C. Now. Let's check the options and here are the options. So the correct answer will be the second A and C. Moving to the question number three. Question number three states that what is the effect of changing aperture from F22 to F16? So there are two new terms. First is aperture and second is the F number. So aperture, first of all, aperture is the opening of the lens, which is majorly uh, defines how much the light enters the lens. And the second is the F number and F number uh, is given by the focal length of the lens versus aperture. So here you can easily see that the F number is the inversely proportional to the aperture. So in case if there is a bigger aperture of the lens, then the F number will be small. Okay, now let's check the options. So the light entering the camera is half. The result is the four faulted increase in the light. The aperture size is doubled and allowing more light and the aperture size is half limits the light exposure. So for this, the correct answer will be the option number three. The aperture size is doubled, allowing more light. And now let's check the explanation part. Standard full F short sequence includes F1, F1.4, F2, F2.8, F4, F5.6, F8, F11, F16, and F22. And they all follow a geometric sequence based on the square root of them. So First of all, uh, let's talk about uh, these values. So these are the F numbers. And when we move from one F number to next F number, then they, then this shift will be called a one stop. Then this shift will be called one stop. So, so in this case, for example, if we move from F16 to F22, then the aperture size will be decreases. Not in the question, it says moving from F22 to F16. So in this case, the aperture size is double, which allows more light. Now, as the area of the circle means aperture and decreases, the F number increases. I already told you they are inversely proportional. So the F1 has the largest aperture size and F22 has the smallest aperture size. Now, Let's move to the question number four. The aperture in the camera functions similarly to dash in the human body. And here are the options. The retina in the human eye. Option second, the nerve ending of the human eye. Option third, the corona in the human eye. And the option for the iris in the human eye. And the correct answer for this question is the, the iris in the human eye. And here is the representation of, the, of a human eye. 
and as you know when you go outside in the in the sunny day then the, your pupil your pupil and the iris will constrict and your the iris area will become smaller similarly when we when in the darker areas the your pupil or iris get dilated and you you capture more light that make you able to see in the dim light similarly the aperture of the camera works in case of dim light a uh, bigger aperture or you can say f2 has a bigger aperture which is mainly used to capture the very dim light situation now let's move to the question number five question number five states that two main function of aperture in photography is control the amount of light and dash and here are the options Option first, sharpness of the image. Option second, ISO sensitivity. Option third, adjust the shutter speed. And option four, focusing speed. And the correct answer for this question is option first, the sharpness of the image. So, in the aperture, so aperture controls the sharpness of the image, controls the sharpness by controlling the depth of field. So, now let's check how depth of field and aperture are correlated. So a smaller aperture means higher f short number. So in this case, the depth of field will be the D. This means the depth of field and the aperture are also inversely proportional. Now let's move to the question number six. What does the depth of field refers to in photography? And here are the options. Option first, the distance between the subject and the surrounding. Option second, the distance between the camera and the subject. Option third, the color depth of the photograph. And option for the area within the photograph that is in sharp focus. So the correct answer will be the option four because I already told you the depth of field is the, the way uh, to define how our image is sharp or what is on the focus. So the correct answer is option number four. Now let's take the explanation part. Uh, first of all, the depth of field is defined as the area of photograph that appears sharply focused. This is the definition of the depth of field. Now. Larger aperture means smaller f short. For example, larger aperture, for example, uh, smaller f short means f22. Uh, sorry, f2, not f22. So, in case of f2, which is a smaller f short, this they result in the narrow depth of field. So, in this case, the depth of field is narrow. For example, they focus more on the subject. For example, this is the subject and this is the surrounding. So, the image will be more focused on the subject rather than surrounding. And this is an example of a large uh, aperture. And this is how uh, how we click the photo in the portrait mode. Uh, moving to the point of three, smaller aperture, large f-stop result in the broader depth of field. And small aperture are majorly used when the crime scene investigator or photographer have to capture the entire scene in focus. So in that case, the smaller aperture or broad depth of field is used. So Aperture setting inversely influences the depth of field. I already told you the relationship between the aperture and the depth of field. They are inversely uh, influenced. Now let's move to the question number seven. Which aperture setting would you like to be used to achieve a small depth of field focusing on the subject while blurring the background? So it is an example of portrait, portrait photography. So in case of small uh, depth of field, the aperture will be the aperture will be larger and when the aperture will be larger, the f-stop number will be smaller. For example, f2, f5.6. So now let's check the option. Option first is f2, f option second is f16, option third is f22 and option four is f32. So we need a smaller uh, f number. So the correct answer will be the option number first, f2. Moving to the question number eight, how does a fast shutter speed affect the motion in photographs? So fast shutter speed means the reduction, there is a reduction of the exposure time. So now let's check the option first. Option first is it blurs the motion. Option second, it freezes the motion. Option third, it has no effects on motion. And option four, it darkens the photograph. And the correct answer for this question is option second, it freezes the motion. Now let's check how fast shutter speed affects the motion in the photograph. And here is the image representing the three different exposure time or the shutter speed. And first is one by 500, which means the shutter opens and closes at a rate of one by 500 a second. And second is 130, means the shutter opens and closes at a rate by one by 30. And here is the one by four. Here you can see that a fast in in case of 
faster uh, shutter speed it captures more crisp image while at a lower shutter speed the pins of a fan is blurred and similarly when we go more slower shutter speed then the motion is too blurred and the pins of the fan is not visible and one of the common example where fast shutter speed cameras are used are the sports are the sports where the players are moving and they are need to be captured uh, in a freezing motion so they are appear focused and freezed to the rest of the field now let's move to the question number nine how does the iso function in both film and digital cameras and here are the options option first it adjusts the lens focus of the film or image sensor to the light second it changes the color balance of the film or the image sensor of the light third it alters the sensitivity of the film or image sensor of the light and fourth it modifies the shutter speed so the correct answer for this question is option three it alters the sensitivity of film or image sensor of the light now let's move to the explanation part so iso refers to the sensitivity of the camera sensor and the sensitivity of the camera is also defined in the terms of the signal grid. And the representation of ISO R is usually in the form of ISO and followed by the number, for example, ISO 100 and ISO 200. So moving to the pointer three, higher ISO means higher sensitivity to the light. Now let's understand this with an example. Now let's say uh, there is a camera number one which has an ISO setting of ISO 100 and there is a, another camera um, whose ISO setting is 200. So according to the definition, higher ISO means higher sensitivity to the light, which means it, it requires less light to capture details. So the camera one with ISO 100 requires more light as compared to the ISO 200 to capture details. Now let's move to the question number 10. Question number 10 states that what happens when you increase the ISO settings on your camera? So, first of all, the image sensor became less sensitive to light. This is wrong. As I already told that in the previous slide, the ISO settings increases the sensitivity of the light sensor. So, A option is wrong. Second, the sensitivity of the image sensor to light increases. This is correct. The sensitivity of the image sensor to the light increases. Now, the amount of light required to exposure to expose the image decreases. This is also correct as uh, the ISO increases as the ISO increases, the necessity of the external light source decreases. Now, option four, the image quality compromised due to the increased noise. This is also true, and this is the major disadvantage of increasing ISO. So, what happens here is when the ISO of an image, so when we increase the ISO from 100 to ISO 400. So with that much of higher ISO, the sensor becomes more prone to the more sensitive to light, which leads to the more noise, which degrades the image quality. So the correct option will be the B, C, and D. Now let's take the option. And option number four, B, C, D, represent the correct answer for this question. So the correct answer is B, C, D. With that, this presentation is ended. I hope you get the clear idea about the depth of field ISO shutter speed.